In this episode, we're talking specifically about incorporating local sports content into your radio station website and when it may be time to create a new brand. This is Better Radio Websites, the podcast for radio professionals who want to see their website generate more traffic and revenue. Each week, your host, Jim Sherwood, and his special guests give you time-tested tips and secret tricks to ensure your radio station dominates digital in your market. Here we go. Hi, it's Jim. Thanks a lot for tuning in to Better Radio Websites. It's so awesome to have you here and wanting to learn more about making your radio station website better. You know, local sports programming, it can be a huge revenue generator. And really, kind of sports and radio have gone hand in hand ever since the first score has been announced. I mean, radio was there to announce the score, and and then it's kind of evolved into, you know, putting games on air, putting this information online over over time. Well, now stations are really expanding their coverage of local sports, and uh, the revenue is really paying off. Some early adopting radio stations have built year-round online revenue generators just by providing local sports content on their station websites. And some have even created new brands outside of the radio station because the demand for this sports content was so great. It really just depends on your market. Check this out. Earlier this year, Town Square Media, Cheyenne, Laramie, Wyoming, they acquired the local sports website, 7220sports.com. Now, this website was formed by a fan, all right? Just a Joe Schmo in the community there. All he did was blog about the University of Wyoming Athletics, and that's all the website was, okay? Well, over time, it developed this living and breathing entity, and folks were talking about it, and folks were hitting it like crazy, and Town Square saw the potential in this, They already had two websites in the market with sports on it, okay? WYOPreps.com. And then they have a news website there in the market called LaramieLive.com. Now, why wouldn't you just be okay with the sports programming on LaramieLive.com, your news website? Well, because the market was eating it up. The majority of the content on all three of these websites are really coming from their sports station and their news station. So they're doing basically the same thing, but now they have this other brand that is specifically University of Wyoming Athletics focused, and I'm sure they're going to expand on that a little bit more. In Springfield, Illinois, New Off Media invested in digital way back in 2015 to deliver local high school sports and highlight packages and original features on athletes and teams on the company's channel1450.com. And we'll have links to all of these in the show notes. This website was named for its sister station, Sports Radio 1450 WFMB. Now, it's a standalone website dedicated to area prep sports. They're not doing national news. They're not doing college news. They're just doing local prep sports. It is hyper-focused, and folks are eating it up like crazy. Advertisers are throwing money at it. By the nature of its digital format, the staff isn't constrained by linear broadcast schedules, so it's not really, it's tied to the radio station, but it can live independently. On Friday nights during football season, for instance, the staff often works until 2 a.m. producing highlight packages, video now, for the website. These are radio folks doing digital stuff using video. (laughs) All right? Social media is a key component of this website, too, because the staff says that they relentlessly post to Facebook and Twitter in order to drive traffic back to the website. 94% of traffic to the website comes from social. That's exactly what should be happening. They don't post the videos on social media. They post links to the videos on social media that drive traffic back to channel1450.com where their advertisers live. Yes, for local advertisers, these uh, sports websites, they offer a new avenue to reach potential customers. And the site's demographic on these, check this out. It may surprise you, channel1450.com. You know, you would think that, you know, male demos typically associated with sports would be the highest one. Adult women, yeah, so-called soccer moms, frequent visitors to the website. Now, these stations, they probably all started out putting their scores on their station website and then kind of expanding it a little bit. 
and then expanding it a little bit more, the kinds of coverage that they put on their website. So much so that it demanded another brand. All right. And that's exactly what happened in Sylacauga, Alabama with Radio Alabama Sports. Net. We have Michael Brannon, Executive Vice President for Radio Alabama on the line. Michael, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Absolutely, Jim. Super thrilled to, to be on. Uh, congratulations on the podcast, too. Oh, thank you so much. This is, uh, if, if, if stations out there are not doing a podcast of some kind, I know you guys are doing a lot of them, but if they're not doing a podcast of some kind for their area, they really need to jump into it because not only is it very popular right now, but it's so easy to get in the game. It really is. Yeah. Um, we, we have been really forward thinking in terms of how we've been trying to produce our podcast and really focus on what the listener might want to consume, but also what we do well, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so, uh, you know, we've, we've gone, we've run the gamut, really. We've worked with two local pharmacists who are brothers who wanted to have their own podcast that have started to create a following where they're interviewing local people and kind of humanizing them a little bit like the mayor and the local high school football coach to doing original content uh, on a show called behind the headlines, which won an Alabama broadcasters association award this year for the best small market podcast uh, where we talk about news that's happening in around our, our, world, you know, and, and in our, in our world, I'm using world in small letters <laughs> and interviewing community members. And so, um, like I said, the gamut runs wide, but yes, find a space and get into it. And the biggest thing is, is to do it consistently. Oh yeah. That's the key. It is. It, it is. And it, it's really not as tough as you think it is. I mean, uh, right. I sit there and I'm thinking now all of the time, you know, that'd make a great podcast. And then, you know, a couple of minutes later, oh no, that'd be, that'd make a great one too. And so, yeah. and uh, once you, once you get into it, uh, the ideas kind of flow, but, but, the, you know, we, we kind of jumped into podcasting thing. Tell us about radio Alabama and, uh, and radio Alabama sports there. Right. Well, where do I begin? That's really <laughs> the story. And you probably know this pretty well, just from working with us for the last at least five years mm-hmm. since I've been here, uh, five years this month, as a matter of fact, which is hard oh, to believe. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, And so I think our first project that you and I worked on together was the launch of SilicagaNews.com, which is our hyperlocal news sports and weather website. And that was a vision from our owner, Lee Perryman, who is from the Silicaga area. He worked for the Associated Press for 35 plus years as the director of global broadcast uh, technology and operations uh, based in D.C. and in, um, in, in, in London. And for those TV people out there who know what I'm talking about, if you're familiar with ENPS, which runs the newsroom, he created that. That's uh, <laughs> if you know, you know. So, but anyway, uh, Lee created uh, SiliconAngleNews.com. That was kind of the launch of what we wanted to do with a mirrored appearance on digital that we had on radio, and that was our first foray into that because he had come back from the AP and bought the radio station that he worked at as a high schooler. And we had the radio station going. He wanted a news product that would uh, that would work in a collaborative effort with the on-air product. And so SiliconAngleNews.com was born. Since that time five years ago, when we had just two radio stations, we've now grown into uh, six different radio brands, eight stations that we own and operate. And then we also now manage five other assets in the Auburn Opelika area, along with a, uh, a very nice high gloss um, regional magazine. Hmm. So our total assets, if you combine uh, everybody throughout the entire listening area in East central Alabama, it's about 1.5 million uh, potential listeners. If everybody turned on the radio at one time, and when you combine with, you know, who we work with around the state in terms of content sharing and different things of that nature, it even grows even more. And so we're all about making sure that where you're serving the public interest, first and foremost, which is what radio was built upon, but also making sure that we have a commitment to consistency, to the content that we create and entertaining and informing our listeners in, in everything we do. And we do that across multiple platforms, not only on the radio with all of our Uh, all of our formats from country to uh, adult contemporary to classic hits, but also online, like I said, with silicoganews.com, Radio Alabama Sports, which is our sports arm of our business, and uh, and now our digital offerings as well. So 
where we've really grown in the last five years. And with that, a big move to a downtown studio in the Silicaga area where we now have an old TV set in our building. <laughs> people walk in, people walk in, it's crazy. People walk in and they say, why in the world do you have a television set in your radio studio? And it's really about the commitment to making sure that we have a multimedia approach to everything that we do. For those that are just, you know, kind of like stuck in the radio mindset, don't you think they're, they're, they're instead of staying still, they're taking a step back rather than forward? Because I would think that everybody who's anybody knows that, you know, there's online, there's video, there's so many ways that people are consuming content now. And if you're not moving toward how they're consuming the content, then you're really taking step back, st steps backwards. Am I right or no? Absolutely. You have to be, it's like a visa commercial. It's everywhere you want to be. Mm -hmm. So you have to really consider where is the listener? Where is the viewer? Where is the fan in, in some cases? You know, when it comes to high school sports, we have a great relationship with the schools that we have, especially where we're located in Sylacauga, Alabama. So we, we have a great relationship with the Sylacauga City School System and the journalism department at the school. So, you know, we've got the local radio station, us, doing the games live play-by-play. -play. And then we also have a video component that goes along with that as well that the students are helping produce, and it's on our platform. So we're giving the school a little love in terms of the the visibility. Mm -hmm. The students, you know, are getting some love with the experience, and you know, it's a it's a product that also benefits the radio station as well. And so, it's a win win win. If more and more radio stations can have that type of mentality and approach, I'm telling you, iron sharpens iron, and being able to have that type of uh, that type of landscape for everybody to play in is a big deal. But yeah, you're right. You have to be able to produce content well, be consistent, and put it in places where people are going to consume it. And sometimes, sometimes it's a necessary evil, you know, to to be on the social media platforms of the world. You know, I know so many people are like, ah, I don't want to do it. You know, I don't want to be on you know <laughs> Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And hey, I, I'm right there with you in many cases, but you got to consider that's where many people are. And so being able to adapt to the ways that things are going on, you don't have to use it personally, but if you're trying to grow your business, yep. there are way, things that you have to do in so many ways to, uh, to play the game. Well, you know, we could probably talk all day and probably do, um, you know, two months worth of podcast on all of the stuff that you do there, but we're talking about sports specifically this week. Yes. Yes. And so, um, <laughs> what kind of sports content do you have on your, uh, your specific, you know, brand radio Alabama sports? So radio Alabama sports is, uh, is definitely a, it, it, it has been, it's been a game changer for us to be able to put together something that we really thought in the beginning, well, you know, what, what, what exactly is the concept of what we are doing here at Radio Alabama? And when we really, when we, when we took a step back and we said, okay, we do something really well, it's sports. We do sports really well. We said, we need to have a dedicated platform just for sports. So we came to you and we said, Hey, how can we create this sports website uh, for all of our content to live on. So if I can take a step back for a second on the backstory of how we got here, we, at the time when I got here five years ago, we were rotating a coverage of a day of a weekly game of the week. And we looked at this and we said, you know, revenue is okay. Um, but how can we, how can we really s put our stake in the community? And of course, you know, make more, make more money in this game as well. So we said, let's cover a school year round consistently on one of our radio stations. We did that and we did really well. The, 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 the revenue was up on the station. The community really grasped at it the first year and it gave somebody something to be pride, like have pride in. Um, that was clients, partners, uh, you know, our, 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 our advertisers, our sponsors, they really wanted to own something. And that's what we did was we created something in our content where people could own every piece of the game and nobody else was doing that. So our clients really loved it. The listeners really loved it because we were putting it on the radio. We were putting it online. It was on social media. So that was serving another purpose, like I was saying earlier, about being in multiple places. 
we've had this discussion internally before. Well, don't we just want people to consume us in one place? Is that where it was initially on the news website? Well, it really didn't exist. That was the that was why we created Radio Alabama Sports. Ah, okay. To, to have it all live in one place, that was a hub essentially. Sure. But when it was distributed, it was on the radio and it was on the news website and it was on social media. And we were th starting to think, well, you know what? It really doesn't matter where people are consuming our media as long as they're consuming it. We want to make sure that we're in front of people's faces. It's just like if you think about it, McDonald's is a great, a, a great example of this. They have television ads. They have billboards. They have radio ads. You might see them on social. It doesn't matter. You're being exposed to the brand, right? And at some point or another, when you come to a crossroads at an intersection and you've got a Burger King on one side and a McDonald's on the other, you're probably going to choose McDonald's because you've been exposed to the brand more. So there's a brand affinity to what it is that we're doing. So it has definitely separated ourselves from the quote unquote small quote competition because people know, hey, these guys are the professionals. These guys have a good product. These guys mean business. And not only do the Student athletes and the parents, the people who are in the games understand that, but our clients and our, our partners uh, understand that as well. So with Radio Alabama Sports, it's been great because now all of our high school sports content lives on there. Schedules, scores, any news that's local lives on Radio Alabama Sports. And then we also cover some uh, college athletics as well. We have uh, some guys who do some local content, which mirrors – our on-air product uh, on in the afternoons that they also produce onto Radio Alabama Sports as well. So it's we're, we're looking at a regional and statewide approach to what we're doing. And, uh, hey, we've got a small staff, but uh, we're, we're, we're packing a pretty big punch. So how, how, how big of a staff, would you say, is in that building? Because you, you said you're in a big building now, so you must have hundreds and hundreds of people, right? <laughs> I think we're like we're up there with Amazon. I think we have uh, several thousand. People. It, would, it would it would seem that way for as much content as you put online. But how many realistically? Yeah, I mean it's really uh, you know besides myself five. Oh, wait, wait, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You said fifty five. Yeah, five. <laughs> One singular. <laughs> singular. Just yeah. just five people. In terms of day-to-day -day filling the content, now, as far as play-by-play -play and sideline reporters and all that, when it comes to football season per se, uh, we've got more like 30. Okay. And those are like part-time people that just come in just for the games and that sort That's of thing. That's exactly right. I got you. But having a, having a platform like RadioAlabamaSports.net um, is great because we can direct our our clients and our advertisers to that website to see the content that we're producing. We can use it as a universal brand as well. And when I say a universal brand, what I mean is it's not tied to one radio station. Mm -hmm. It's not tied to something that may not exist in the next year. If we decide to change a format on a radio station, which we've done this past year, as a matter of fact, we flipped two of our radio station formats, changed the logos, changed the formats, everything changed. Radio Alabama Sports stayed consistent. So it gives the listener and the viewer an opportunity to say, okay, I'm familiar with this product, whereas I might listen to it on the radio. That might change. I know that it still lives in this space. I know where to find it, and I know where to consume the media. How do you sell these these uh, these websites? I mean, because that's probably the number one question that I get asked whenever somebody wants a new website for their station. Well, how should I sell it? Should I sell it separately? Should I sell it combined? What kinds of – give us some sort of an idea of how it works there. So the that, it's somewhat of a difficult question to answer because we've done it both ways. Mm -hmm. And let me let me trail off on both ways for first here. The first way that we've done it is bundled it. The second way is we've we've sold it on its own. The way that we've sold it on its own is by doing an overarching, hey, um, you know, you can be a part of all of this on the website, um, certain elements on the website, et cetera, et cetera. The way that we've bundled it is where in our sports packages that are our local high school sports packages, 
if they are over a certain threshold, then we will give them ad space on the website. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So we've done things two different ways, and I really think it's I really think it's going to be up to the radio station or whomever is creating the website and the content, whoever's managing it, to figure that one figure that one out. I have I have found that the, our best practice is to bundle it but not to devalue it. Right. And that's the big thing is to be very important is not to devalue the space on the website. Just because it is a banner ad on your website does not mean that it should be priced lower than anything else that you put out on the air or anything else of that nature. It should be premium space. There's only so much space, right? That's true. So it comes at, it comes at a premium. So if you do bundle it, build it in and make sure you do not devalue it. So what if I was a client and says, okay, look, uh, I love this team. I could just sponsor those team pages and everything about that team. Absolutely. That, which is exactly what we do. We have, we have one sponsor in particular with one of our high schools. That's all they want. They just want that one school. We cover four, five, four, four area high schools. They just want that one high school. And we are within a 15 mile radius of the other schools. I mean, so, so they just want that one because that's the city and town that they are rooted in. And that's the one that they want. So yes, they can just have that one. And we have packages and content that live across all of them as well. So, um, it's, a it, it, it can be done really any type of way. And, and how, how was the traffic like when it's not football season? You know, not, not, not the fall. Is is your traffic still pretty good? <laughs> well, when, when Alabama and Auburn foot, uh, basketball, when Alabama and Auburn basketball are doing really well, mm -hmm. <laughs> then it's, it's a lot better, uh, which has been seen here in the past uh, two years. But yeah, I mean, when football, when football happens, it's a, it's a big time traffic generator. When Auburn and Alabama basketball are playing and they're doing really well, that's a big generator uh, in terms of you know an off an off season outside of sports. When high school content is produced that people are engaged with, that's when we find the most traffic to our website. When I say engaged, what I'm referring to is people who are watching videos or voting on a on a poll or engaging in a contest, that type of thing. So you know the the latest story about the the game and the the final from Thursday night's soccer match it might not get as much traction as voting for the player of the week or watching the latest interview with the high school football coach does that make sense sure sure and to some radio stations that are you know owners and managers that are listening to this content that that you and I are producing here you don't have to go all out you can go out with your iphone and upload a video to the site and put it up for people to watch. I mean, that we, this is, this is the 21st century. People understand that you're taking video on an iPhone. It's not going to be professionally produced in many cases where you have to lug out a bunch of equipment. This isn't ESPN, you know, big time stuff. This is local content that people are wanting to consume and uh, they're they're going to accept it That's for fantastic. sure. Fantastic. And, and again, Michael, we could just literally sit here and talk for uh, for days on everything that you guys are doing there. Is there any final thoughts that you'd like to maybe share to the station owners out there, or the program directors, or the digital people out there who are just getting into, or maybe even haven't jumped into their radio station website about anything sports related or even not sports related? First thing would be. Call Jim Sherwood because he can help you with all of your problems. Jim and I talk multiple times a week. I don't know if that's part of our deal or not, but I, <laughs> I don't know what's, but you get a little bit of extra. I know, right? Thank you. But, um, no, I mean, Jim, Jim has helped us. You have helped us, Jim, on so many, so many different things. I mean, if there's something that we've said, Hey, can we do this? Jim has found a way. Uh, and if not, he's found a, a close, a close solution to it. Um, the second thing I would say is email me. If there's a question that you as a radio uh, you know, manager or, uh, or owner have, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. M Brannon at radioalabama.net. M as in Michael Brannon, B-R-A-N-N-O-N -N at radioalabama.net. Uh, the third thing would be just 
be consistent with the content that you produce. The consistency is the key and be able to produce it in a way that can be in multiple touch points. And when I say multiple touch touch points, I'm, I'm talking about online, on air, on the go, in a mobile form, social media, uh, several different ways that people can consume it and you will win. It's worth the investment. Yeah, absolutely. Michael, thanks again. Uh, and thank you so much. And be sure to hit up radio, Alabama sports.net and radio, Alabama.net as well. Michael, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Jim. You know, you don't need a dedicated sports website to start off with. I mean, it really going to depend on your market and your staff as well. But I mean, gosh, you know, Michael says he only has five people there actually producing content for the websites. All right. Start by adding just a little sports information to your radio station website. Be sure that you still promote it well. You can't just add it there and then never mention it. But see if your audience buys in on it like you do. Because if you promote it well on air and on social media and you have a passion for it, well, then your audience will as well. All right. If, you, if the data suggests that most of your visitors are hitting your, the sports content on your radio station website, after a while, it may be time to create another brand that you can use separately. And now, hey, not only do you have a, a radio station and a radio station website, now you're building your company. You have a radio station, a radio station website, and a sports brand. So jump into it. Start small and then grow it, promote it, and see what happens. Just don't be too late and wait for somebody else to beat you to the game. Because there are folks out there, it could be uh, like one of these fans in your market that could jump online tomorrow with a website about the local sports, and then you're you're not in the back seat anymore. You're at the stop sign, you know, two streets back. Uh, you know, don't get left behind. Jump out there and do it. Don't don't wait till late. All right, that's all for this week. Thanks a lot for joining us. Be sure that you hit that subscribe button so you'd never miss an episode. And reach out to us at Jim at SkyrocketRadio.com to let us know how we're doing. Next week, we're going to talk about finding and using legal stock photos for your radio station website so you don't get caught by the image police. Have a great week making your radio station website better. Talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to Better Radio Websites. Inspired by today's episode? Be sure you are subscribed and share this episode with a friend. Visit skyrocketradio.com forward slash podcasts for more episodes as well as show notes for this episode. Need help starting or making your station website better? Visit skyrocketradio.com.